What's up, guys? How's it going? It is uh, crazy because we're breaking news, and you know it doesn't matter where we're at. I mean, Thomas, as you can see, it's not the studio setup, but Thomas is with us because overseas, it doesn't matter what time zone we're in. The Eagles are always making moves, as Howie Roseman does, and appreciate you guys joining. It is official, if you're wondering. Um, Thomas, first off, how you doing? I know that's a crazy time zone and everything else, but we're still jumping on with this breaking news. How's it overseas? Yeah, you mentioned being overseas. I'm in Scotland right now. Two more days till I head back home on a week trip in Europe, and I'm in Inverness. So I'm up here way, way north, and I check Twitter as I'm getting ready to go to bed. And we've traded Sai Reddick to the Jets, but for what, Josh? This is the crazy thing. The return is is going to disappoint a lot of people. Yes, yes, it, it will. Um, and it's official, so we'll get into it right here. Like you mentioned, the trade, uh, as you can see on your screen there, uh, it is official. The Eagles are sending Hassan Reddick to the New York Jets for a conditional 2026 third-round pick Jeez. that could be a second, depending on, you see there again, could be a second depending on the play time. So if he's at 67.5% play time this season um, and has, and, important, and has 10 or more sacks, then it's a second-round pick. Otherwise, it's a third. So, like, I mean, the Jets are getting a really good haul here. Uh, now, I mean, they're protecting themselves naturally with conditional. We know you go back and forth the reports of, you know, they're not being able to get what they want. Eagles taking forever, waiting till April 1st, which, you know, that's the time frame for that bonus coming in or the kicker there. But, I mean, what, what, are, what are the thoughts on, on that side? I know Hassan being gone for one, but just the fact that that's what it is, conditional 2026 as well. Where are we at? Well, let's be real. First off, when I saw this trade, it, this, this seemed fine. I mean, a, a third-round draft pick is what we all expected. I know we wanted a second-round draft pick. I think Bleacher Report had a weird mock trade where the Ravens would give us number the one, 30th. which is never going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Right. So so a third-round draft pick makes sense. What year is it, though? We're in 2024. That's two drafts away. You have to get through this draft and then two more drafts to be able to actually see the fruition of this pick. Reddick might not even be in the league in 2026. The Eagles are going to be a completely different football team. This is shocking to me that this is what Philadelphia is willing to get for Hassan Reddick, who still is, despite being old, a very, very good double-digit superstar pass rusher. This clearly shows you, Josh, that the market was never great. The market was never there for Hassan Reddick, and Philadelphia probably had offers for this draft around a fifth or a sixth round draft pick. And honestly, we talked about this for weeks, whether I was in Atlanta or over here in Scotland, we've been saying the same thing. The problem with Hassan Reddick is the age plus the contract. Now the production is there, but when you look at what Hassan Reddick can give you over the next couple of years, you have to first pay him 25 plus million dollars a year. And if the Jets aren't doing that, I'm very surprised because they wouldn't make this trade if they hadn't already talked to Hassan Reddick's agent and convinced him that they were going to have the proper money to go ahead and do this. Even if it's $23 million, Josh, over a three-year deal, is Hassan Reddick going to be good in three years? Is he going to be worth the cap hit and the cap space that you're going to have to pay him three or four years from now? Now, you and I and other Eagle fans might think so, but clearly other NFL teams did not. And we're at a point where you are getting a draft pick that we're going to forget we had. Literally, we're going to get to 2026 draft and go, we yeah. have two third-round draft picks. What did we do? To oh, that was Hassan Reddick. It's very surprising, but clearly they would not have made this trade if they had better offers. This is the best that they could do, and they just told you, Josh, they were never going to pay them the ass $25 million, and so they have to make a move. You're right. It's a great point you bring. They, they were never going to you're, – you're going back and forth trying to get what you, you want or what you can. Um, shout out to my context picks for saying you guys rock. We appreciate that because, again, Thomas, like you mentioned, was about to go to bed. But we, we stay up all hours of the day nonstop That's texting, right. you know, hey, alert, heads up, the deal got done. I don't know. I, I'm with you to a certain extent, but there's a part of me that's like, and, and you make a great point from all sides there. There's a part of me that's like, you know, as as we look at it, and I'm sure that I'm seeing all sorts of comments. Some people that love it, some people that hate it in the in the chat. Right. So I know that there's going to be total sides of the spectrum. But it's like, you had Hassan Reddick. If you try to figure something out, I know there's the comp pick scenario. You know, if you keep you hold on to him, sure. let go. But it's also the question of was he even going to play, right? Like, cause there's a, a potential of him just holding out and saying, "No, you're not going to get me done." Like, yeah, I'm on this roster, but I'm not going to get anything there. This almost goes to the point of, and this is total speculation. Didn't see a report on this official, but almost to the sense of like, "Hey, Reddick's camp said pay me, or I'm not playing." And so if, if, yeah. if Howie goes and says, yeah, like I'm in the agreement of saying this is not the best trade. You got to sit there. We will. We'll be doing the draft in a couple of years and we will both be. Oh, yeah, that was the Hassan Reddick pick. 
Now, you could probably turn it into something good. Hopefully, he plays well enough and he gets those 10 sacks. That's the conditional pick, like we had mentioned. Uh, and he plays 67.5% of the snaps and everything there. So it's a second round pick. But it still almost goes to the point of like people saying, hey, Howie got a terrible deal on this. Howie is a good negotiator. Like, Howie knows what he's yeah. doing. So it tells me more so not of like the lack of what Howie can do, but to your point, the market itself and saying, like, you know, that's what he could get. Like, that's as good a value. He sees the writings on the wall. He went out and got Bryce Huff. He's got to play. He's got to start. And he's getting other players out there and saying, you know, it looks unlikely, feels unlikely based on Reddick's camp that he's going to go in there and play. So I don't know. I, I'm I'm with you there. That's um, it's shocking to say the least, though, still. I mean, as we see it, we knew that there's be a possibility of this thing uh, happening and taking place. But now it's official. Yeah. Um, and like Dirty D, just a quick shout out, Dirty D, appreciate the two uh, for the super chat. It says Bryce Huff better step up going edge at 22 now. Do you think does it change the draft perspective here? I, I totally agree with the Bryce Huff, but does it change the draft sure. perspective at 22? Well, again, if Bryce Huff gives you double-digit sacks this year, then this looks like the right move. This is the right move because, again, you're going to save a bunch of money. And who knows? Can you parlay this into Justin Simmons? Can you parlay this into, you know, Julian Blackman and go get another defensive player? I don't know. If Huff gives you double-digit sacks, then Eagle fans will understand this. But if Bryce Huff was a one-hit wonder, Bryce Huff was the product of Quinn and Williams and the Jets' defense and Jermaine Johnson and all the greatness that was the one good aspect of New York up there in the Meadowlands the past year, then this is going to look really rough. I do think that pass rusher becomes a little bit more in play, but you and I have looked at the draft a lot. You've done a lot more coverage, especially this week, than I have on the draft, me being traveling here in Europe, and there aren't a lot of pass rushers at 22. There are some, you think the Alabama pass rusher, there's obviously the Florida State pass rusher, they're top 10 picks. Could they fall out of the top 10 because of all the quarterbacks that are, are going to go? Sure. So does how we have to trade up to number 12 to get somebody? Maybe. But if you're staying put at 22, you're hoping that Chuck Robinson isn't a reach. And I think a lot of people would see him as more of a late 30, early second round guy. There isn't the draft mm -hmm. pick that you scream and say, oh, well, at 22, you take this edge rusher to replace him. I think they already knew that Reddick was probably not going to come back. That's why they signed Bryce Huff immediately, day one. We covered it here on both of our channels. And they basically told you that we think Josh Sweat plus Bryce Huff plus jo Josh Davis's favorite player, Nolan Smith, who they think is going to be really good this potential. year, is going to step up and it's going to be enough. And listen, Philadelphia had a defensive philosophy last year where they were going to try and sack the quarterback a bunch and pray the secondary would hang on. How did it work? Didn't work out very well. This no. year... They're still going to try and sack, but are we going to sit back and say the secondary isn't supposed to be a little bit better? Is that more of a Fangio philosophy here to play maybe better, better coverage overall and hope that that produces sacks? I don't know. What's crazy to me, though, is just how little value you get for Hassan Reddick in the open market. And again, people can say it's a bad trade. Josh, you said it perfectly. This is the best how he can do. You, you can't sit back and go, wow, Howie is a GM wizard. Look at all the moves he made week one of free agency. And they flip around and go, what is Howie doing? Is he stupid? Does he not know what he's doing? Clearly, they would have gotten more if they could. And this was the best they could do three weeks after free agency started. I mean, clearly, it took forever to get someone to even to fight. Yeah, it really did. And, and to your point, it's it's not the, you know, I've seen comments also of the Jake Rosenberg salary cap guru being <laughs> headed out, you know, oh my gosh, negotiations went, you know, to crap and you can't get anything you do the best right. as you can i mean shout out tony cadillac appreciate the five on the super chat says wtf how you trade your best pass rusher <laughs> who outperformed his contract so much for having depth and how he has a bad track record of drafting defensive ends i sure. mean you know that brandon Grant wasn't too bad it's too it's yeah it took a little bit but yes you're right in the long haul that that is true it, it, but also to your point you mentioned it i think very well this draft doesn't necessarily set up for drafting that defensive. Unless you maybe you could trade up. He does like to trade up in the trade first up. round, but I don't know that he's going to go sure. in that direction. Uh, but but still, I I think that there's also I, I don't like it. Not a very few people like it. I mean, just, I've seen the polls, I've seen the numbers, see the comments, yeah, no everything this. else. But you know, it's like you did kind of see the writing on the wall because Jeremy Fowler's with the whole moving the bonus to April first, trying to get a trade done, mm -hmm. giving yourself somewhat of an ultimatum. You make the signing of Bryce Huff, like you talked about, too. Like, you felt like this was probably the direction that it was going in, but then as it goes a little bit longer and, hey, there's some cap space, perhaps you get something done. But you know what? Hey, Hassan Reddick, he stuck to his guns. He's saying, I want what I feel like I'm worth. Good for him. He's earned it. 
go make whatever you can. That's fantastic. He stays pretty close to home there, right? You're in New Jersey. So, sure. it, you know, it, it works out for Hassan Reddick. I think that we can be okay. I'm not like burning everything and saying this is terrible, but I do also understand. And I think we're all in this boat of like, you need the rotational pass rush. And there's a lot of unknowns. Like you mentioned it, Nolan Smith. I love, I love the potential. I think that there's something there. We don't know. We haven't seen it near yep. enough. So it's a question mark there. Are you going to draft someone? Hopefully, yes, you're probably going to draft some edge rusher. It might be later. But there's also some guys that came in, specifically a Zach Bond, that I think there's, and, and I know that potential is meaningless until we actually see it because we talk about it a number of times. But right. Zach Bond, they've been comparing this most recently, this past week at the NFL annual meetings, to a guy like an Andrew Van Ginkle. Now, if he can get to that level, that's fantastic. Sure. But still, it's like, okay, we talk about all these other guys that have small sample size. That's a very small sample size in a Zach Bond. Does he fit the mold of a Fangio scheme? Yes. But until we see it, yeah. who knows? So I, I, I'm with you. There's there's some skepticism. There's some you know unknowns on this side. But at the same time, you know they're they're moving on here. Does it resort to rely a little bit more on coverage? Hopefully that's better. It has surely is better than it was last season. Um, but yeah, we're going to be moving on from Hassan Reddick. And just for those that are catching up, joining officially, I'll just recap real quick. But the trade is official. Uh, Adam Schefter. The Eagles sending the edge rusher Hassan Reddick to New York Jets for conditional 2026 third round pick that could be a second if he plays 67.5 percent of play time this season and has 10 or more sacks. So that's a again a very um, as I think we might have did we lose Thomas briefly? Okay, yeah, he he his, he was on data uh, a data cap, so he might he's going to try to rejoin. We'll see if we'll see if this can work. Let's see if we can get it back in here. You're back. Okay, I got the text, the data. Um, but yeah, I was just recapping the the trade. So, but yeah, that that's that's where we're at officially. It's going to be tough. Um, you know, I think that Hassan can have a good season, but still, you're you're probably maybe a third round pick could be a second if Hassan has a fantastic year. Uh, and we'll see. That that's that's where we're at, at right now. So. I know I'm seeing lots more comments too, just just from uh, the chat. Shout out to everybody. Um, there's vast majority saying this is bad, this is terrible, this is oh, yeah. not great. Um, not surprisingly, though, but yes, uh, questions of you know how much cap space does this give us? I don't. It, it's I don't know. It's the hard to exact tell. Exact ramifications. It's hard to tell. We had a ton of room, so it's not really a. It's not really like, oh gosh, we could go make a big sign. We could go get Justin Simmons. It's he had enough room before this. He right. would have enough room after this. It, it doesn't change it necessarily. Uh, I, I I don't know. We'll, we'll end up seeing where that where that goes on that side. Let me just throw this in there. Why on this on, on this thought and boot me if it doesn't work, right? Because we're on uh, Scotland Wi-Fi right now. Trying to do, do this little we're live see. stream. There were reports, Josh, all last year that there was turmoil inside the locker room, especially inside the defensive locker room. And one of the reasons why you lost Sean Desai and why he basically was demoted, fired. I mean, come on. He basically didn't have a job after promoting Matt Patricia was that people didn't get along with him, that there was head bunning. He wasn't able to control some, I'm not going to say hot heads, but some egos on defense of side football. And Lane Johnson hinted at that big time in his locker room postseason cleanup press conference and a lot of people or some people thought some of the defensive linemen were part of the issue and whether it's Josh Sweat or Hassan Reddick we don't know but there is the idea that maybe there wasn't a lot of team chemistry with Hassan Reddick and it wasn't ever going to work out so I think I'm lagging a little bit though so let, let me know if I need to go but yeah. I think this was probably the best that they were going to have. Yeah, I I agree. Uh, the the audio was sounding fine. I don't know if we're getting the the video, so but the audio was still coming through okay. So so far so good. Cool. We're relying on the Scotland Wi-Fi, but um, no, just I, show you. That's I'm, good. I'm, <laughs> I try to go just show a different graphic other than just like the spaces out glitch, but uh, getting to like a 16 bit viewpoint on that. But no, I I, I, I agree. That's a that's a good point you bring up. Um, wanted to get to a couple other super chats too. Dirty D, appreciate the five. Uh, says they got guys that they hope will have production like Reddick when we already had Reddick. Um, LMAO, we better, we better see another big signing after this. I, I mean, I understand it, it's a fair point. Yes. You had Reddick, you know what he is, you know, one year, um, 
who knows if he wanted to play on that, was willing to. All that we talked about at the beginning of this, the contract negotiations, this is what Howie felt like and was the market kind of dictated the best deal that you can get for Hassan Reddick and who might have wanted him, which team wanted wanted uh, to sign him. But at the same time, it's like, who, who, do, you, who do you want to go out there and sign? Who, who, what other big signing are we talking about? If it's a Hassan Reddick's gone, like what other player do you go out there and replace him with? You know, I mean, there's not in my mind, we're so late in free agency. We're, what, day 17, 18 now in, yeah. in free agency? There's not a a big signing in terms of like, oh, let's go replace Hassan Reddick now. You made that move initially in a Bryce Huff. Like, you're really hoping that Bryce Huff is Hassan Reddick. You signed him to be the next Hassan Reddick. And I think that how he saw the writing on the wall, did that early, like you mentioned, and you got to basically just live with the results. You got to live with the outcome because this is where it's going to be. Well, and let's, again, ask yourself this. Last year, you had Hassan Reddick. How good was the defense? This year, you have C.J. Gardner johnson and now Bryce Huff, and now a linebacker core. I think the defense is still better. It might not as good as it could have been if you would have kept Hassan Reddick with the rest of the group, but I would still vote the defensive did the defense did get an upgrade, even with Reddick being gone, because the secondary should be much better, and you still have nine draft picks to add more people and Nolan Smith has a healthy shoulder and will be in year two. I mean, this is not the end of the world. It's just not as much It's not as much capital as quickly. If this third round draft pick would have been in 2024, no one's complaining right now. It's because it's two years from now that we all sit back and go, okay, it's a little bit rough. Yeah, it's it's uh, <laughs> it's gonna be, it is it's it's gonna be so long. That's the part too. You know, if it was the, if it was this year's draft. You're still like, okay, crap, we lost Reddick, but you're going to get a quick return on it, or hopefully a quicker yeah. return, because you're going to use that draft pick, whether it's moving up in the draft, or you just select the, the, the player at that situation. But yeah, the fact that you have to wait for two seasons, I mean, it, it you're not going to really not, not going to feel any ramifications of it for forever, basically. I mean, that, it, it takes you so long. Um, Bald Eagle, appreciate the two, says this defense has more what ifs than last year. You, you buying that? More what ifs than. No. <laughs> They have they have they, CJ Gardner Johnson and Devin White make them better than they were last year, and Vic Fangio does that as well. I, yeah. I firmly believe that. Yeah, I mean, I, I I would I think I could um I could get behind more maybe more what ifs like going into the season because I think that we were so hyped on the team at, sure. after the off season we had the draft everything else just hey we're going to the Super Bowl maybe in that sense but I think coming off of this past season and what we saw like. To your point, you got Fangio. You're going to run that system or scheme anyway, so you want the father of that scheme. You bring in some guys. Yes, we need some players to contribute, and you got some some holes there. But we, looking back on it, hindsight's twenty twenty. But like looking back on, it, I'm kind of like there were more holes, obviously, that we all saw as the season went on. So I don't, I don't know if I'm uh, at the what ifs either. Um, although to that same or kind of on that same note, to that same token, profit time. Appreciate the two says this is CJ GJ all over again. I guess the the negativity of the move and you know Probably. passing on does does Howie does Howie regret this move though that's the question you know I I can't I can't really get to that because it's a different point like I know there's a lot to to take into this but CJ's a, a CJ was younger CJ is still younger but he was younger at the time of the situation yeah. like you're moving on from a guy who it wasn't as much of a hey there's an age factor there's a market there's he wants this different number it was basically just how he's saying like, eh, okay, we got you an offer here, but it's not really what we think that you're worth. And, and that's it. It's kind of similar to the sense of Hassan Reddick, but he's asking for 25 and, and mm-hmm. uh, even a lot of people, I hope and think, cause I saw a lot of comments early on when Hassan Reddick and the contract negotiations were going, were going on. I would say that there was probably still a majority saying Hassan Reddick is not worth 25 million. Now we all wanted to keep Hassan Reddick, but it's not the same in terms of that contract number. So I don't know if I go so far as saying it's a CJ GJ all over again. Yeah. Again, was Hassan Reddick going to hold out a training camp? If, if, if this trade doesn't happen and it's July or I should say August 29th and Reddick hasn't reported we're all sitting there going, why didn't you just trade the guy? Like, what's what's the point of the drama with a new coaching staff and a new league year and a football team that is very much going for it this year, despite this move? If he sits at a training camp because he wants 25 a year, you know, we're all sitting there going, get rid of him because we, we can't afford it. It's a lot of money. And if he doesn't give you double-digit sacks this year and he costs $25 million, you're on the hook for two more seasons of that, 
and it goes downhill from there because he's over the age of 30, you're regretting this. So, again, last offseason, free agency came. We thought we did a good job. Turns out we didn't. This offseason, free agency came. We think we did a good job. We still have nine draft picks to go work some magic with. Let's wait and see what the draft looks like before we condemn this defense to being mediocre. Yeah. Well, uh, flipping the bird, appreciate the two. Um, as of a lot of people and a lot of comments that I've seen, but says this makes no sense whatsoever. I, I, I understand the whole longevity, and like we talked about, you know, you, it, it's it's the best deal that he could get. I, I I think we keep on having to remind ourselves of that. I'm I'm having to, I'm trying to look at it as a glass half full because I totally understand Hassan Reddick, the impact, what he makes. Um, mm-hmm. I do I am I am anxious. I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm anxious. Because of Hassan Reddick is it's not just the production, but it's also the when he produces. And I know the last part of the season, like nobody was producing, so it's not a great point there. But still, on the overall picture of it, like Reddick of most players on the team was the guy who came up with the sack in the biggest moments. Like he started earning the closer title because of doing that. So, yes, someone else has to step up. But, you know, like unfortunately, you got to make some tough decisions. This is where how he felt like was the best direction to go in. Like we said, best offer he can get. You got to wait two years till you get that draft pick recouped. Hopefully it's a second round pick. Maybe it's a third, depending on what his produ- uh, production is. Um, I don't know. It's one of those that we're going to have to let play out. Tim Poley, appreciate the two also. Uh, I'm sorry, the five. Uh, it says Huff, Sweat, Nolan, BG. That isn't a bad edge group. Sad day, but we just couldn't afford Haas. Probably was going to be him or Smitty for a big deal. There you, there you go. go. I was about to say that there's one extension that has not been done yet, and it's one that every Eagle fan would take if you went straight up. You want Smitty for five more years. You want Reddick over 30 for three, which is you rather have. Everyone wants Devontae Smith. It's the right move. And, again, 2026 rolls around. Who knows? The, the Eagles could be, you know, loading up for a Super Bowl run. They could be rebuilding. We don't know what they're doing. Now they have more ammo to go ahead and do and, and do that with, and they'll have Devontae Smith for the long term most likely at some point this offseason. Yeah. And and it also, I mean, again, it's like, it's the priority of, it, we've seen this for a while, but the continued prioritization of the offense. So you're just saying like, hey, look, the way the NFL rules are, the way they continue to mm-hmm. be, and the money that is driven on that is you want to see offense, you're going to protect the offense. So it's, it's not crazy to see that there's continual focus on, hey, where are we going to spend? Who are we going to extend contracts on? Where are we going to save the cap space for? Try to get money from other players and then shift it over to the offense. So yeah, I'm totally with you. The vast majority, just about everybody's like resign, extend Smitty, get this thing done. Um, you can't, he's an Eagle for life. Like do not lose Smitty. And you know what? If that's a choice and you're sitting there looking at that, it makes sense. You're looking at it down the road. I know that's not the best to lose Haas. Everybody would love to keep him. Um, but you know what? You move on. You say, hopefully these guys can work. As Bald Eagle, appreciate the five, said, what if Nolan Smith stays healthy? If Rodgers plays well, if Devin White if? can return to form, if the Bulldogs step up, and if Bradbury can return to form. I mean, that's a lot of what ifs. That's a lot of, you know, hey. hopeful. But if they do, I mean, we're sitting pretty. Like, everybody's going, oh, hey, that that was a, a great move. I don't know if all that's going to happen. But, like, if 50% of those things happen, honestly, I mean, sure. you got a lot of potential, and we're hoping for a lot from Fangio. You got some other players there. Uh, Rogers, you know, hardly gets talked about because we're still waiting on the official reinstatement. But yeah, I mean, if Isaiah Rogers, if he gets in action, he's not rusty. Help with the secondary form there. Um, Nolan Smith, not only I, w- I would add to it, like not only stays healthy, but like makes an impact. It is is mm-hmm. a, an extra move, some development that we need to see. But yeah, there's there's lots of potential there. It's just a question of, you know, actually, do we see that? Let me reset real quick, too, because Full Send Daily, appreciate the two, you said, did we cover the conditions of the third round pick? I, I mentioned a couple times here, but just again, for those joining us, um, if you've not already, please hit the like button. It, we appreciate it. Helps out the algorithm. We are first here for the news, as we usually are. Um, oh, I did not realize the bubble goes up every time you do that. That, that always just, every time you throw that up, there's a bubble emoji. I did that not fun? realize that. That's, that's great. <laughs> uh, but yes, for the conditions of the pick, uh, of the uh, trade, so it is Hassan Reddick, 2026, two years, that's forever, I know, but 2026 third round pick <laughs> that could be a second. So the conditions of that are Hassan Reddick has to play 67.5% of the playtime this season and get 10 or more sacks. It's not a, not a guarantee. What, if I were to ask you percentage-wise that he hits those numbers, like 
Where where are you at? How confident are you that he can even hit those? Uh, I mean, in the Jets' defense, I think I'm pretty confident. But I, again, I mean, I think I hit it a little bit too much, and people get tired of me saying it. But when you hit 30 in the NFL at certain positions, you hit kind of a cliff. Like you kind of slowly go downhill. Like you don't have multiple double-digit sack seasons over the age of 30. I mean, I think he had one good year at Brandon Graham. He had an injury after 30. He's been kind of a rotational guy since. He's still a good player. I think Reddick could probably be good for the Jets this year. But the problem was always with Philadelphia was 2025 and 2026 and 2027 when Reddick's 31 and 32 and 33. How much production are you getting for the price? And that's the NFL. The NFL is price first production. How much do you cost? How much do you give me? You give me a lot, you're going to get paid a lot. You give me a lot, but you think you're going to give me a little shortly after? Uh, the years are going to come down a little bit. And that's what they were fighting here. I mean, for the past year trying to figure out this extension. And I guarantee you, Josh, they offered him 18. They probably offered him 20. I don't think they went over 20. But yeah. even if they went 22 and he said no, at some point you got to know when to fold them and walk away. And clearly Howie Roseman did today. Yeah. Yep. Zach Lambert, uh, appreciate the five. He says it here too, similar to what you're talking about, but says, how are you doing his job? He has to think two to three years down the road. Cap wise, it was yep. just probably best as much as I love Reddick, no more void years now. So just, you know, you gotta, you gotta move on to, to your point. Cause initially you're right. The, the numbers that we heard, cause it was hard. We weren't getting a lot of specifics, but the for sure numbers we heard was 25 from Reddick mm -hmm. and 18 to begin with, with Howie. We didn't hear anything beyond that. So it was just total speculation of like, well, how far is Howie willing to go? Like, where are they going to meet in the middle? Uh, but again, if it was a hold firm at 25 and Howie tried to creep up a little bit there of 20, 21, 22, maybe. I don't even think that they got that high, really. But who knows? We'll, we'll maybe figure that out later. But yeah, you say, sorry, it's just you got to you got to move on. You got to look forward to the. The years ahead, he didn't feel like it's worth it age-wise, cap-wise. Um, looking at the rest of the team, you signed Bryce Huff. You're hoping that with extra snaps, he doesn't regress, or maybe not regress is the right word, but you know he can keep up that level of production in the pass rush win rate. So we'll see. I don't know. Um, Tim Shabazz, appreciate the five as well, says we could have kept Swift, uh, Swift and Reddick. How he is overrating Nolan Smith won't replace bleep. Crap. <laughs> or keep it kid-friendly. but. Yeah. Well, I, I, I like, I like Nolan. Let's not, let's not, he didn't say, you didn't say he's a bust Tim or Timothy. I don't know if you prefer by Tim or Timothy, but I shortened it to Tim, <laughs> but you don't, it, that felt like a, like Nolan's bu a bust. You know, I, I, I get that. There's a lot Too that we need to, to see tell. from him, but let's, let's just wait. Let's pump the brakes on that. I know that we could have kept Swift. You got Bark, you got Saquon though. Like, I don't, I don't understand a Swift comment or statement there. I, I get the Reddick, but sure. We, we upgraded significantly for the running back position. I mean, again, you watched last year, and I know we can blame coaches a lot, and the coaches get a lot of blame, and all the coaches are gone except for one, but the players got to play too, and a lot of people wanted the status quo to stay the same and just run it back like everybody that we had. Clearly, the front office thought they needed to make some changes, and I, again, will just hint at all those little rumblings that there was locker room turmoil that no one wanted to talk about, and I wouldn't be surprised if some of the people who were gone might have been part of that to some extent will we ever know probably not but clearly they wanted to take the core and put new stars around them they get bryce huff they get garner johnson they get saquon barkley and they're going to try and see what happens this year with maybe some more mature adults coaching them in all their different uh, positional groups and coaching rooms yep a reminder too, just uh, people that are seeing Thomas wondering why he's not in the studio. He is in Scotland, but this is the true dedication. So if you're not already, hit the like button, <laughs> subscribe to both channels. It doesn't matter what time of day, what country we're in, anything. There's live breaking news. We will be on here. Be first, um, like we always are. Also, shout out to Jasper Drake becoming a member. Welcome to the uh, Let's Run It tier. Also, sweet. Um, donating a membership too. That was pretty sweet. Let me get to the other super chats. They're coming in pretty fast. I want to make sure to hit on all these. But uh, yep. I am Mavericks. Says I'm honestly okay with this. Uh, we did a one-for-one -one trade for a younger player, a soft reset for the D. I want more op, uh, more opportunities for Nolan Smith, how he signed Justin. I know there's a Justin Simmons. I agree. Article, so it's possible. Stamp it's, of it's, approval. You know, sure. hey, as much as like these these uh, parts with Hassan Reddick, we say it gets closer to, to April 1st. You might, you might get a trade. You might get a trade. We finally get a trade. The longer that Justin uh, Simmons we don't hear from, it is more likely because every day his his money and financial ramifications continue to drop because teams are not willing to pay what he wants. So 
Um, yeah, you, you never know. Flipping the bird, uh, appreciate the five again, says no pass rusher in the draft is better than Reddick. This is a wait and see if Howie did the right thing. Huff has all the pressure to produce now. I don't know. He does have extra pressure. I mean, he already sure. had a decent amount with the contract. I don't, I don't know. Like, personally, on his side, I don't know if I look at it and say, oh, wow, Hassan Reddick's gone. Like, now I really feel like I got to be the guy. Maybe, maybe he does, but I, I'm, I'm thinking this dude is a guy who was a two-star recruit, you know, ended up getting on to Memphis, not a lot of expectations, played his way to be a stud, and then goes to the draft undrafted, uh, just another chip on his shoulder. Like, he's had a lot of reasons to prove people wrong, so I, I don't know it's a as much like, oh, I'm putting pressure on myself of, yeah, I'm going to be the guy as much as it's already like he has that self-inflicted pressure and just be like, no, like I'm going to show you guys that I am I am way better than a lot of these other guys that basically got drafted before me. So I don't know. Um, it, it, it's a fair point, though. We got to wait and see what happens, not rush to judgment and say this is the the worst thing ever. Uh, I shine 101. Appreciate the 20. Let's go. Says this draft needs to All be... Right. Um, only, uh, excuse me, this draft needs to only be about fifth round blocking tight end and a running back plus right guard or right tackle for when lane retires within the first two rounds, the rest, the rest, uh, go defense and more defense only. Hopefully that edge rusher from UCLA is available. Lay two, two. That's, I mean, I, I you Maybe. go back and forth. I, they, <laughs> they have their interest. There's interest, right? There's interest in, in late two, two. Um, the whole, Fireman comment is a little bit uh, reminiscing, I guess, of of Danny Watkins. I know it's totally different, but still, every time that I think about a firefighter and and, and all that, plus the injury concerns, right? That the neck uh, or the neck that he had right. to medically retire briefly. So, um, I don't know. Lot lots to like. There's question marks, concerns. That that's just about every draft prospect, as we know. I mean, there's just kind of a a crapshoot. Certainly outside like the top ten, you can even go fewer than that. But outside the top ten, you start going well. He looks good, seems good, possibility. Um, I, I'm totally with you, though, on let's figure out the defense. Let's go heavy on the defense. I don't want to go anything other than defense at 22, but we'll see where how he goes in that direction. Tony Cadillac. I agree. I'm with you on that. With another five. Appreciate Tony. Says, uh, bought a Reddick jersey. Uh, oh, bought a Reddick jersey, returned it, and won't get my refund until 2026. <laughs> there you go. Sweet. <laughs> On the defensive line, it will look bad if Reddick elevates the Jets with uh, A-Rod return. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true if, if he does elevate with A-Rod's return. but <laughs> The Jets are all in, man. The, the the New York Jets know that if they stay healthy, Tyron Smith, Son Reddick, Aaron Rodgers, Mike Williams, they're all in. They, they are going all all in on their last shot with Aaron Rodgers, and it's going to be fun to watch if he can stay healthy. Yeah, yeah, they will. It's uh, so so far, you know, they're they are they're they're making uh, moves that they know that they have to though, because it's it's like you say, a Rod, go all in, yep. see if it works. If it doesn't, they're going to be in not the best spot, obviously. Um, but for us, it's it's I think that it's not a full blown all in. I always made some acquisitions of like, wow, Saquon Barkley, you know. Devin White, Kenny Pickett, some that are like really good, some that are okay. What is this? CJ Garner Johnson coming back. This is one of those that, again, I think that if we're being real with ourselves, it feels like the polls that I've seen, the comments that I've seen on videos, you and I have talked about it a number of times. It felt like this was going to happen. Now it's officially mm-hmm. happened and Hassan Reddick getting traded to the Jets, but it's it's coming to terms with it and we won't really know how it pans out. I mean, honestly, you know, to Tony's point, we. We won't know for three or four years, really, if this was a good return because it'll it'll say, okay, how does Hassan play in the next two to three years? What draft pick do we end up getting? Who does that end up becoming? It, it, there's so many things at this trade. So um, I get the immediate reactions, but that's kind of where we're at so far. So um, it's going to be fascinating. It's going to be absolutely fascinating to see what 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 how he does in the draft and 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 what Reddick looks like with the Jets. Again, he's probably going to be productive, but. This is a this is a move we will not know until the twenty twenty six pick and until you see if Reddick has you know double digit sacks the next three seasons and when because again the report came out from I believe it was Mike Garfolo saying that the plan is that they were um, going to going to extend Reddick. So we have to see what that money is gonna, is is going to do. Yes, that's true. Good point. Because and, and they only make the trade naturally if if they're going to go after Reddick to begin with. So um, yeah, he's he's going to get a bag and. 
Good for him. Um, shout out to Andrew Mormon. Appreciate the five. Uh, says, so they spent all the cap on Slay and Bradbury and lose Reddick. Are we sure Howie is a genius? Because this is a colossal mistake. I mean, I don't know that, like, I, I'm with you, Andrew, of the sense of everyone realizes looking back and saying the Slay and Bradbury yeah. and not doing the CJ Garner Johnson and stuff, but like, I, I, it's, it's, this doesn't feel like as much of a negative in a sense of, or I, I guess I should say, I don't feel like it's as fair to pile on the Slay and Bradbury. Everyone makes mistakes, totally get that. I've called out Howie, you've called out Howie, everyone has, I'm sure, at a, at a certain point. We're not saying he's perfect. He makes a lot of good moves, though. He made a mistake on Slay and Bradbury. It, it's not the sense of, hey, we spent all the cap there so that we couldn't on Reddick. Now, there's ramifications of the deal that you made, sure. But still, like Reddick was always going to want to get paid. Like I don't, I don't know necessarily in my mind. Just because you kept Slayer Bradbury, or let's say they were gone, this is a total hypothetical. I know, but like even if they were here, I don't know that changes where the contract negotiations are here. This is not about like oh we had the cap space or we didn't have the cap space. It's more so what are you worth? And like you talked about earlier, Thomas, you were saying like you start out eighteen and twenty five you can't reach a middle ground that whoever was holding firm or whether both parties were not, not willing to come far enough to get in the middle. You say, well, this isn't going to work out. And you make the trade. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And you know, Bradbury has one bad year. If he has a good year this season, then we'll look back on it. The NFL is a year to year league and some people are good. Some people are bad, but again, you can only pay so many players. There's only so much money in a salary cap league. And, I, I truly believe we're going to see a tweet come tonight, tomorrow, next week, saying the Jets have given us on Reddick a three-year, $25 million a year deal with $50 million guaranteed. It's going to be huge, and we're all going to go, oh, so that's why the Eagles didn't keep him because they just couldn't afford him because you got other mouths to feed and, most importantly, one named Devontae Smith. Yep, and that, that'll that make it better. It'll, it'll ease the pain if we can see a, a Smitty extension, which will surely come yep. – Fairly soon, that'd be the expectation. Um, let me get to the Super Chats real quick here. Uh, missing some of those, but Zach Lambert, appreciate the two, um, says, in the in the bowl, where was the D-line? Only one sack in 52. It's true. No matter who you have, it, it, they have to produce. Granted, you know, we won't get into the whole field situation and all that, but but yes, there was, you know, only one sack, so there's a, um, a point to be made, I suppose. Um, but, uh, or I guess in 52, yeah, it, you know, I guess... It depends on the offense, I should say, not the field for that one, but the offenses um, of, of 52. Uh, Waffles, appreciate the two. Uh, it's a good name, too, as well. Waffles, bruh, I'm in Universal, and this <laughs> ruined my trip. No, come on. Don't, don't, yeah, don't, don't let it do that. It's, there's bigger things in life, even though, like, I, I, I know that it's, it's, it's frustrating. Just put it on the back burner. Enjoy Universal. Have a blast. You could come back. Whenever you come back from Vegas, be like Thomas. Whenever he comes back, you guys are going to get hit with so much content, so like and subscribe if you aren't already. Um, but, you know, right now, enjoy enjoy the vacation. Enjoy the time off because it's going to get crazy and nuts over the offseason leading up to the draft. We've got, what, a month away, so we're going to be there. A month away. Um, it's crazy. But, yeah, don't don't let it ruin that. Jay Ross, appreciate the, the one. I uh, don't see a comment, but appreciate the support. Uh, Latin Inferno, appreciate the five, too. It says Reddit cap hit was too high. They can now trade for Simmons and trade for Sertan. I don't know about that. Eagles are moving toward youth and giving vets short-term deals. That is true. They they are continuing true. the route of moving towards youth, like how he said specifically on the defense. Um, and you know, don't don't commit too long term for the vets. So if if he said he was going to do that, he's holding firm to his word. We'll see if it works. Um, I don't know about the whole trade Sertan comment there. Like that's very Denver's not fetched, trading Sertan. But maybe Justin Simmons. There's a possibility there. So there you go. We will see. But um, appreciate as always. We're going to go ahead and sign off here. For those that are just catching, uh, you can play this one back. Full details, takeaways from the Hassan Reddick trade. But it is official. Even though we may not like it, it's hard to come to grasp with. The uh, Eagles have traded Hassan Reddick for a conditional third round pick two years from now, 2026. Um, so we'll see. We will see how that one plays out. Lots more shows to come. Like I mentioned, uh, be sure to like and subscribe. As I've been saying, we got tons of content. We're going to be live draft night every single night. See where this thing plays out. How does Howie adjust from this? Um, I feel like he already was planning on this for quite a while, but we'll see. How does he adjust? Um, come hang out with us then for sure. But um, as always, appreciate it. Signing off for Thomas Mott, and uh, we will see you guys till next time. Go Birds. Go Birds.